idea about how to get from natural world to spiritual world, we buy into it. Now, some people teach that there is no spiritual world, so you're just going to have to stay over here for a while, and Jesus will take you over to the spiritual world when you're dead. But that's not actually what Jesus taught. We know that's a false doctrine. But a lot of times, once you realize that it is God's will for us to be in the Spirit, to live in the Spirit, not to visit the Spirit, not to occasionally come and visit the Lord and say, Lord, I'm visiting you. Jesus is at the door. He's knocking. He's visiting today. Well, Jesus at the door knocking isn't for him to visit. It's for him to live. <laughs> Why was he knocking? He was supposed to be living. So anyway, so that's not a good situation. You don't want him knocking on your door. That means somehow he ended up outside the house. <laughs> and what that means is, is not that you lost your salvation. It just means that, you know, you aren't dining. You aren't living together. You're living separately in the same house. <laughs> so anyway, so all of this teaching that we get, it gets us from, from over here in the natural to over here in the spiritual because we're taught that there's this great distance between you and spiritual you. Now, just so you know, this is not unique to Christian religion. All religions are like this. All religions teach you that between you and God is a great chasm, and through your extra religious activity, you're going to get from regular natural you to super spiritual you. And guess what? There's always these guys that are the super spiritual ones, and they're always on the other side, and they're telling you, you can be super spiritual like me if you do all of this religious stuff I'm going to tell you about. Well, guess what? That's all a lie. All of it. There is no amount of religious activity that you can do that will get you any more spiritual than you already are. Because the scripture is very clear that Jesus himself took us out of a kingdom of darkness and into a kingdom of light, which is basically a place where there is no revelation to a place or things were hidden in mystery to a place where there was revealed knowledge. And what is the revealed knowledge that you've gotten, that you've received? The revealed knowledge is the revealed knowledge of Jesus Christ. And what is the revealed knowledge of Jesus Christ? It is Christ in you, the hope of glory. So what that revealed knowledge is, is that all this religious activity you did to get into the Spirit was never going to get you into the Spirit. It was just keeping you busy. Busy doing what? Busy doing whatever it was that was not who you were. Because what we should have been doing all along was being who we already are, which is spiritual. Just be you. And that is a person who knows both this realm and that realm. They can see in this physical, but also see into the other dimension of the spirit, which is the heavenly realm. And who did that? How do we know we can do that? Because Jesus did that. Because if Jesus is walking down the street and he meets a guy on the street and all of a sudden when Jesus just says, hi, how you doing, Bob? He says, hi, how you doing, Bob? I saw you standing by the tree and I saw you doing this thing and I saw you doing that thing. And I just want you to know, blah, 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 be healed. Well, where'd that come from? Well, that came from the heavenly realm. You see, so we're supposed to be like this. And how do we do it? Lots of religious activity. Read more books. You know, usually reading more books is, is the more important part because you have to sell books. So, <laughs> but read more books and you'll get more spiritual. And I like books. I have a lot of books. But religious books don't make us spiritual. You know, religious books, now, now we can look at, like we talked about on Sunday, people that have gone before us, people that are following in the pattern of St. Paul and of Jesus, right? We can look at those guys that follow that pattern of mystery, okay? But the books aren't making us more spiritual. Teaching is good. Yeah, even the book that we're learning tonight, The Short Method of Prayer, or simple. What's it called again? <laughs> I always get it wrong. It's A Short Method of Prayer. It's an old book. It's a good book, but that's the whole thing about this book. It's short. It's simple. It's not, there's nothing to it because what you realize is that you are already there. You are already there. Surprise, you're there. <laughs> so what we're doing is, is we're learning how to fully digest enjoy. First, we learned about, what is it? Meditative reading. We learned about taking the Word of God and chewing it, getting the taste, 
and then swallowing and moving on to another piece, right? Until we're full, right? Of, of not the actual word, but the, but the, <laughs> but the spiritual word. <laughs> Lena's looking at me like, what are you talking about, Dad? <laughs> okay. So what we read in page nine is, as a person who only masticated an excellent meat would not be nourished by it, although he would be sensible of its taste unless he ceased this movement in order to swallow it. So when the affection is stirred, if we seek continually to stir it, we extinguish its fire. You know, another way, and we read this before, so I'm, this is a little bit of a review. This is where our religious works can really grind the gear, so to speak, of our, of, of our lives. Because this is the kind of thing where we do stuff over and over and over and over again. And we're trying to get something out of something that we're doing that has long been gone. There, there, this has not, this is not what you do. You don't do these things. You see what I'm saying? It's like, for example, let's say you were taught along a certain line. First we play, you know, we play, I'm going to try my best to talk right. First we play two, two, okay. First we play two fast songs and then we play one slow song, right? Then we play three slow songs and now we just play all slow songs. It's like, what are you doing? Who cares what you do? Just love the Lord and enjoy him. What if you didn't play any songs and everybody fell on the floor laughing because the spirit of God was there because you're already there and you're just having a good time. So all of these works and all these things that we do, it's, a, it's immature. It's immature and the Lord is trying to show us this and it's okay. I mean, it's silly, but it's okay. We learn. We're learning. I'm not judging. I'm not, I mean, I do the same thing. You know, well, how do you build a church? Well, you have to do this and you have to do that and you have to do this thing. And the Lord's like, you don't have to do any of those things because Jesus is the one who builds the church. You're like, oh, well, I thought I was supposed to build a church. Oh, they taught me wrong. Jesus is the one that builds the church. I'm not going to do his job. Well, Jamin, you're, you're being irresponsible. No, I'm being, I'm finally being responsible. Thank you. <laughs> That's all I'm going to say about that. Okay, so let's look at this other one. All right, so we talked about before, okay, about joy. Joy. Hark, you watchmen, lift up your voices together. They sing for joy, for they shall see eye to eye the return of the Lord to Zion. Break forth joyously. Sing together, ye waste places of Jerusalem. For the Lord has comforted his people. He has redeemed Jerusalem. This is Isaiah 52. Okay. But she says in, in the book, she says, but as I said, that the direct and principal exercise should be the sense of the presence of God, we must faithfully recall the senses when they wander. Senses. So what senses? Five senses. Your thoughts can wander. Hearing, eyes, thoughts, they start to wander. What are they wandering into? Well, they're wandering outside of where they are. So this is what we call as the circumference. But she says the direct and principal exercise. That means we are completely focused on the presence of God. So you want to enter into what you have? Take all of your senses, your spirit, your soul, your body, whatever other dimensions that we're in, and just focus them right into the presence of God. And there you are. It's so, so simple to do. But what happens is, is we get in and then we get pulled out. How do we get pulled out? all different ways right somebody would be like beep beep you know you got this that but you can you know you can get yeah ice cream the oh the light screen <laughs> come back the light screen the whole the whole road is angry with you oh yeah i gotta come back so <laughs> but so yeah so stay in both places as much as possible um so we can focus on the presence of god so here's what she says this is a short and it's a big word, efficacious way of fighting with distractions because those who endeavor directly to oppose them irritate and increase them. Think about that. So you have a distraction. Get away from me, distraction. Stop being distracting. Well, what are you doing when you're saying that? You're being distracted, right? So that, so don't, so instead of fighting with distractions, because we're, ta we're talking about prayer, right? We're talking about praying to the Lord in a short method of prayer where you're quiet. We're talking about meditative reading and all those kind of things. So 
what happens is, is when we first started teaching about this, we were like, well, we need to just be quiet and just let the Lord just kind of sink down into the Spirit. And you can do that. You just sink right down into your own Spirit because that you are the temple of the Holy Spirit. Where are you going to go? You're not going up, down, around. You're going right here. Boom. And and there's a there's a gate in there. <laughs> There's a there's a doorway in there, and you can go other places from there, but you're always going from within your own spirit where Christ is, where the temple of God is. So what happens is, is when you're wanting to do that, you're getting this pull out, pull out. You need to, you know, maybe even you need to pray louder. You need to pray in tongues now. You need to pray in English. You need to pray scriptures. You need to find scriptures. You need to read scriptures. You need to read a book. You need to listen to more teaching. You need to do, and it's pulling out. If you're doing it for those reasons, you're coming to this conclusion that you don't have it and you need to go get it. So all of the teaching and all of the words that we hear are supposed to be triggers. It's supposed to trigger us to go in. Do you get it? So it's not a trigger to get you to go out. It's a trigger for you to go in to the spirit of God. You want to receive healing? Well, guess where the healer is? It's in you. He is in you. He is the healer. He is the great physician. If you need healing, the healer is inside of you. So we have tangible anointings of healing power that can go from one person to another. But guess what happens when healing goes from one person to another? It's going from the same body into the other body. We're one body. It's just an administration of that part of the body to another part of the body. You can do that yourself. You can lay hands on your own head. You can lay hands on your own body and believe that healing power is going into that part of your body that you need it to go into. Why is that? Because the healer is in us. So as much work as we're doing trying to get something, if we would use that stuff that we're using on the outside to trigger us on the inside, you know, one of the things that we talk about is how faith comes. Faith comes by hearing. What does that mean? It's a trigger. It's a trigger for you to begin to operate in faith now. Maybe you have withheld and you haven't been operating in faith. You hear the word of God and it triggers you to begin to boom, 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 boom. Now all of a sudden that obstacle that was in your way, that giant mountain, you're like, I ain't going to talk to that thing, you know? That mountain I've been sitting there thinking about, I should have been speaking to. I've been telling people about the mountain. I should have been talking to the mountain. So this is a trigger that we can get where we hear the word of God. So this short and efficacious way of fighting with distractions, okay? Because those who endeavor to directly oppose them irritate and increase them. So how are we fighting the devil? Well, we're not going at the devil. Devil, we fight you. We do that. That is not how you do it. That is not, that is not how you operate in the spirit. Now, if the spirit of God leads you and there's somebody that has a devil and he leads you to cast out a demon, we'll just cast out the demon by the spirit. But we're not in this giant war where the devil's stopping us from being who we are in Christ. You think the devil can stop you from who, being who you are in Christ? The only person that can stop you from doing that is you because you're just not acting on it. Right? right? It's like I can keep myself from driving my car. How is that? By not putting the keys in it and, and putting it in gear and driving, Right. Did the devil do that? No, I did that. Did I have the keys? I always had the keys and I always had the car, but I was the one that didn't drive it. That's the way a lot of people are. They're in a place in their life where they're waiting for someone to drive their car for them, and they were the ones that were supposed to drive it in the spirit. And they were like, well, the devil's keeping me from driving my car. Is he keeping you from taking the key out and sticking it in the ignition? Yeah, because he's been giving me these thoughts. He's been telling me that if I drive my car, it's going to be terrible. So I just haven't done it. Well, who was the one that didn't do it? You. You see what I'm saying? So he's pulling you out from yourself, from where you are in Christ, and trying to bring you into this other realm where you're doing this battling of the enemy. And you don't have to battle the enemy. The enemy was already defeated because Jesus defeated the enemy. You see? So this is, this is why she's saying if you're praying, you don't directly go at your distractions because then that irritates them and increases them. You see what I'm saying? But what do you do? But by losing ourselves, hold on, <laughs> I'm coming back. But by losing ourselves, I almost lost myself when I said that. By losing ourselves in the thought of a present God, losing ourself, ourselves in the thought of a present God and suffering our thoughts to be drawn to him, we combat them indirectly. And without thinking of them, 
but in an effectual manner. So all of this outside warring that we're doing with thoughts and distractions, if we would just completely lose our, all of our thinking and put it into God and think about God and think about that how much he loves us and how close we are to him and how safe we are with him and how all the things that we had been worrying about, all the things that were out there in him, it's perfect. Seeing ourselves in heaven. Why not see yourself in heaven? Why not see yourself walking along the streets, walking along the banks of the rivers in, in heaven? There's water in heaven. There's water in heaven like on earth. We can walk along the banks. We can see the green grass. We can look at the trees with the leaves, with the healing of the nations. We can go through those places in the spirit. We should. This is our home. This is where we should be putting our thoughts is on heaven and in heaven. Because guess what? All the things that we do here on earth comes from heaven. So you want to get a command. You want to get a direction. You want to know what the blueprint is from heaven. You get it from heaven. So go to heaven. See yourself in heaven. Yeah, but all my family's in heaven in the sweet by and by. One day I'll get... You're in heaven. Start to move in that place. Look, lose yourself. In the, what does it say? The thought of a present God. Your thoughts can bring you places that are wonderful. Your mind, will, emotions, spirit, body, all of this is all you. It's all you. People have this idea, we teach spirit, soul, and body so heavy that people think that their body's not them. Your body is you too. Your soul is you too. Your emotions are you. But the problem with emotions is they have been so hooked in to the lower realm that nobody trusts them anymore. But if you would take your emotions and entwine them in the spirit, take your soul, your thoughts, your will, your emotions, entwine them in the presence of God, then you can trust them. Because what are you getting feedback from? You're getting feedback from the heavenly realm. If God's laughing, do you think he has an emotion? Of course he does. God has emotions way greater than any emotion you've ever felt. Yeah. If you ever even get a little tiny bit of God's emotion, you're like, hold on, wait a second. <laughs> because it's, it over, it's overpowering. But he's not afraid of emotion. He's a, he has emotion. But it's godly emotion. It's spiritual emotion. When this godly emotion kicks in, it... It brings you, like when you're, when you're doing things in your life, an emotion triggers a chemical reaction. A chemical reaction takes place in your body and causes an emotion, which makes you go and do something, right? I am hungry and I have no money. That is an emotion. I go to work, <laughs> right? It, it triggered something in you chemically, right? So what happens? Is it just the chemicals? Are we just chemicals? Or is there something with our chemical makeup, our spiritual makeup? How many dimensions do you even have? We don't even have any idea. We do know we have spirit, soul, and body, but do we know? Is that the only? I don't know. There could be even more. You know, we have mind. We have strength. We have all, you know, Jesus talked about that. Well, your heart, mind, and strength. You know, love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, and strength. Where's the heart, mind, and strength? I don't even know. But as all of this part is part of us. So losing yourself in the thought of the present, in a present God, of a present God. Where is he? Present. Okay? So this giant chasm that we're trying to get across from natural you to spiritual you doesn't exist. Because we have to take our thoughts and lose ourselves in him. And maybe that's in worship. Maybe you listen to some music and do that. As you begin to practice, as you begin to, you say practice as if it's like you're practicing playing the piano or something, but you're not practicing. You're just engaging in the spirit more and more. The more you engage God, the more that you engage in this, the easier it gets. So we get distracted. Oh, I'm so distracted. I got to get battle these distractions. Battle. She's saying, don't do it like that. If you try to battle distractions, battle distractions, what you're doing is you're framing it. You're building it up. You're, 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 and you're also giving it more to work with. And what she's saying is it just irritates it. You know, it's like, a, you know, when you get a scab, it's like, I have a scab. <laughs> you know, it's like, no, kid, stop messing with your scab, <laughs> right? <laughs> stop doing it. It's still bleeding, right? So you don't do that. You just lose yourself in the thought, okay? So here's the other thing. I want you to, and these are very important too. First of all, losing yourself. Where'd I go? I'm lost. Where did I get lost? In the thought. 
You see what I'm saying about that? You can take one thought and lose yourself in that one thought of the present God. So you do that over time. You just, you're moving. You understand that when we're doing this, you're, this is moving. You don't feel like you're moving naturally, but you're moving in the spirit. Okay, so you're taking yourself from this place and you're putting yourself right into the presence of God, right into the into the thought of the present God. Now your mind, your spirit, your body is all connected into that one thought of him. People say that sounds new age. This is not new age. This is old age. (laughs) This is old early church age. Okay, and this is what you do, because when you're doing this, the more that we begin to do this, the less works we build into our life, the more that we begin to realize and operate. What did it say in the book of Acts? There was great grace upon them. When you see that there's great grace upon you, does that give you the indication that you've been working really hard at it? No, that's giving you an indication that God just gave you great grace and it had nothing to do with your effort. Jesus is the one who put out the effort (laughs) so that we didn't have to put out the effort. And so recognizing that. So let's keep looking. So if we're praying and we get distracted to go after them and try to oppose them, just turn further into him. Turn further. So you say, well, when am I going to do this? I don't know. Whenever you feel like it, honestly. Do I need to set aside a special time in the morning? Now, listen, the more that you set aside, not to get something from God, but to lose yourself in him, the better. It's not a work. It just has to do with um, the exercise of your own spirit. So if you decide to spend some time taking that time, but just don't see it as a way or just see it as a way of making yourself enjoy the Lord more often. It's like, now I had a glass of, you know, I had a mug of coffee at 9 o'clock and at 10 o'clock, you know? It's like I had it both times. Did I work at it? No, I drank it. (laughs) You know what I'm saying? And it's the same with the presence of God. It's not a work. You're trying to, I'm just saying the more that we exercise ourselves in the spirit, the easier it comes to us because we begin to realize our natural ability to be able to just be in him all the time and not be separated from him, okay? Because we think that in our head, and we're not. By turning into God and losing ourselves in the thought of a present God, it causes all the rest of our thoughts to be drawn to him. Remember how I talked about this before, about being in unity, spirit, soul, and body, being in complete unity with yourself? When you become in unity in him, and you put your thoughts directly on him, everything about your whole being comes directly into him. When you do that, All of your thoughts fall into line because you just took charge of the situation. (laughs) But if you allow yourself to get pulled one head in it, but you don't, you know, so as we move into it, so distractions get combated indirectly, okay? First Chronicles 28, 9. First Chronicles 28, 9. Doing a good job talking tonight. (laughs) I'm getting there. Okay. So this is 1 Chronicles 28, 9. Old Testament. It says this. And you, Solomon, my son, know the God of your father, have personal, this is amplified, I guess, have personal knowledge of him, be acquainted with and understand him, appreciate, heed, and cherish him, and serve him with a blameless heart and a willing mind. For the Lord searches all hearts and minds and understands all the wandering of the thoughts. Okay? If you seek him, inquiring for and of him, and requiring him as your first and vital necessity, you will find him. Okay? Isn't this what we're talking about? He said, this is what the Lord is telling Solomon. He's telling him that you have this knowledge of God right and you serve him and you have a willing mind and then he says that the Lord searches the hearts and minds and he understands what the wanderings of the thoughts but what if you seek him you will find him see how many times it mentions mind 
You have a personal knowledge, understand him, appreciate, cherish, serve him with a blameless heart and a willing mind. For the Lord searches the hearts and minds and understands all the wondering of the thoughts. So what can you position yourself by your thoughts in the spirit? Yes, because he said right here that if you seek him, you will find him. He knows about the wandering thoughts. So taking, you know, you can see this, this principle in place here. Taking all of the wandering thoughts, the wandering mind, all of this, but what does he say to do to fix it? Take it and direct the thought, boom, right into him. Now, your mind isn't comfortable with this. You know why? Because your mind thinks it's like the circus, um, uh, what's the guy call in the middle? The circus director. <laughs> The guy that runs the whole circus, the, the ringmaster of your mind. The ringmaster of your life is your mind. And when, you, when, and when you don't let it do all the things that it's doing and you say, we're going to just direct all of it right here into him. And your mind goes, wait a minute. I got lions over there and I've got a guy who's breathing fire. Are you sure we should be doing that? And you go, yes, we should. And you just go right in. And you don't worry about the lions. You don't worry about the, the fire-breathing guy and the circus clowns and the elephants and all this kind of stuff. You just focus right in on him, right? All the distractions start to disappear because everything starts to fade out. Boom, it's gone. And then there's Jesus. And then you just chill out. You don't have to do that. You can just focus right on him because what does it say? If you seek him, you will find him. Yeah. It just means taking your thoughts and put it on him. On what? A distant God? No, a present help, a present person who's right there within you. But what about all the things on the outside? What about all this stuff I'm seeing? What about, it? What, about what God's put in you? What about leaving all that behind? Can you leave it all behind? You can leave it all behind. This is how you do it. You do it by leaving it all behind. Leaving all these thoughts and this stuff that you've had in your mind for so long is just leaving it all behind and just running right into the presence of God who's always been standing there like, yes, I've been waiting for you. <laughs> this is great because he loves us so much and he likes spending time with us and he has a lot of fun with us all the time. He really likes us a lot. And so what happens is, is we, in the Spirit, are having lots of adventures. Okay? You're having a lot of adventure in the Spirit. But your mind doesn't always remember it. Because we haven't been taught right. And so God is starting to wake us up. And he's starting to wake us up to the things that we do in the Spirit. And the amount of adventures that we have in him. And the things that we've always had, always with us from the time that we were little. From the time that we were just little kids. The adventures we had, the angels that were with us at the times when we were kids and the things that we did, all of this stuff is all written in our book and God knows about all of this stuff. And so all of these things are coming awake and alive in us because we're beginning to take our thoughts and focusing it on the Lord. Okay? So it mentions minds of So to go after the one, so this is what I'm thinking, right? If you read this, what does it look like? Because it's he's talking about this, right? See how many times it mentions minds, but look what he's saying to do, to go after the one who is going after us. Well, if you're going after somebody that's going after you, you're going to run into them pretty fast. Because <laughs> you were running in a different directions, and now you're running right at each other. And that's what God is doing in us. Now, Proverbs 21.5. Okay? Proverbs 21.5. Okay. Yes. It's all of it. It's... it's and it is glorious. It's glorious in him. There's glory everywhere. It's just, it's pretty intense. Okay, Proverbs 20, Proverbs 21, 5. <clears throat> the, okay. So the thoughts of the steadily diligent tend only to plenteousness. But everyone who is impatient and hasty, <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna be able to talk, and hasty hastens only to want. It's like a tongue twister. All right. So so think about that for a second. So the thoughts of the steadily diligent tend only to plenteousness. 
Like you can, now look, you can take that. That's exact. That's exactly what you think that means. What is your thoughts on diligent of what? Diligently on him. Diligently on the fact that you are in him and he is in you. Diligently living in the union of our relationship with him. The mystical oneness that we have in God. The fact that nothing separates us from him and just going fully into him. That thought is what? Diligently on. When we are diligently on that, what does it tend towards? Plenteousness. But everyone who is impatient and hasty, what do they hasten? They hasten want. <laughs> That's the only thing that they speed up. <laughs> hasty shortcuts. So without taking this into a natural realm, let's look at it in the spiritual. Look at it in the spiritual realm, okay? So hastening, hasty, can you see how all of it, because I still use my keyboard here, so you got this giant ga- chasm, right, between you and, and God. Can you see how all of this religious work, you have to get busy. You have, you're busy working to do something. You're busy working to get yourself from far away, non-spiritual you, to spiritual you. And there's always these people over here, and they have so much stuff for you to do. I don't even know where they come. They come out of the woodwork. They're like, well, I've got this book, and I got that. And next thing you know, and you're back in the circus again. You know, and it's like, well, what just happened? And here comes the ringmaster. We got clowns now, everybody. This is great. You know, and you're like, but wait, I was supposed to put my mind on something. What was it again? I can't remember. I don't remember what it was I was supposed to do. Oh, yeah, that's right. I'm in him and he is in me. That's right. Right. So when we get impatient, because maybe we don't see something that we think we're supposed to see, or maybe we're not satisfied. This, this is what I like about um, Abraham, you know. What did he say? That, that the Lord was his exceedingly great reward. I, I believe that, that he is our reward. So once you have him, you don't need anything else. I mean, you really don't need anything. Now, you probably should get something because you're going to have to eat and stuff. But honestly, you kind of get to a place where you're like, well, I don't think I need anything. I mean, you love everybody. It's not like I don't need anybody, you know. You love everyone, and, but you don't need anything. Does that make sense? So you get hasty, right? So diligent, diligent, diligent. So now think about diligence in your mind, putting your mind diligently on the present God who lives in you by diligence, diligently putting your thought on him, diligently keeping your thoughts from wandering by what? Refocusing yourself on him refocusing yourself on the presence of God who is already in you, that has never left you, never been separated for you from you, okay? So putting our thoughts patiently on the Lord leads to plenteousness of Him. We don't need to be in a hurry at all in enjoying the Lord. We don't need to be in a hurry at all and listen once you realize that time and space are your servants anyway it doesn't even matter all that stuff we were in a hurry to go do all that stuff we were in a hurry to go get done we get eaten time we get different times we get different seasons but staying in his presence staying in where he is you're enjoying the lord no no pressure no pressure in him there's no pressure at all why is that because jesus already did it there was, if there was any pressure, which there was because of sin, Jesus handled it all. We can, we can actually walk as righteous people. We can actually live with the full conscience clear that we are truly the righteousness of God in Christ, no matter what it was or what it is that our mind says, well, you did that and you did it. That's not you. You're who you are in Christ. Everything's changed. So diligence this is being consistent. It's not works. It just means consistency. We aren't earning it. We are just consistently acting on our new creation self. Consistently acting on our new creation existence. 
It's a consistency. That's what the diligence means. It means continually go back in. Continually go back in. Continually see your same. But what am I doing? You are doing something because you're going to want to do something else. It's the hardest part. It's the hardest part about this is keeping yourself from feeling like you're not doing anything when in reality you are because you're enjoying the presence of God. And listen, if you feel like you want to say something, but wait, wait for it before you say something. Wait, and I'm not trying to tell you how to do it. I'm just saying, just let the spirit, like it's kind of like you're going to float up, but just let yourself float first. Okay, let yourself go up first. Don't try to make, this doesn't need to, make, you're not making anything happen anyway. Okay, you see? So this, I'm only telling you what I know, okay? So there's more here, and I'm sure there's people that teach other things that you can get even more from them, but I'm going to tell you just what I know. I know that this is how this works, and I've done this, and this is what I've endeavored to do continually now is to pray in this manner. I always pray like this. I have to be really careful that I don't pray like this and go away and then find out I was praying for the meal, and I just got knocked out on the floor because so I just have to be careful of this stuff and you'll have to be careful too so don't laugh at me because if you do this a lot you may have to be careful too just because the presence of God is so amazing oh my goodness I mean it's kind of like whoo and then you're like come back you got you got other things you got to do it's like all right I'm gonna so just staying in that place so anyway so it's diligence okay now and here this is back to the book again I think we're on page nine we're on page 13. And here, let me warn beginners, okay, not to run from one truth to another, from one subject to another, but to keep themselves to one so long as they feel a taste for it. Okay, so we're talking about mystical prayer, and we're also talking about meditative reading here. Let me warn beginners not to run from one truth to another, from one subject to another, but to keep themselves to one so long as they feel a taste for it. This is the way to enter deeply into truth. This is the way to enter deeply into the spirit. Is by not feeling like I have to go, now we need to pray for North Korea. Now I need to go pray for the, the, the elections. Now I need to pray for that new mayor of ours. Now I need to go pray for the village of Estero. Now I need to go, oh, I should call someone on the phone. Now I got it. You know what I'm saying? It's like all this busy activity when really we're outside. So take it all from the inside, and then you can take one truth and then just sit on that for a while. And this is how I've been doing it, too. I've been, I, you know, we all did this probably already anyway, but we've never had it as focused as this. No. Said as focused like, like she says it right here. She's saying it very focused. And I was like, ooh. In other words, we dug up some water. We said there's a wall down here. And she kept digging like a 1,000 feet lower than we went. <laughs> so I was like, ooh, there's more in here. So that's why we're teaching it like this. So it's that diligence to taste it, diligence to... to to keep your taste for it as long as you have it and then go deeper into that truth, okay? When we're diligent, we don't just go running after different things, okay? There are people who have religious ideas. I already said this, but we have, they have religious ideas to sell and they are good marketers, okay? <laughs> I'm warning you all and people online that there are religious ideas to sell. People like selling stuff. And ideas are sold. Whoever has a great religious idea, in other words, there's a lot of activity over on this end. It looks like it's really catapulting you into the spiritual. They sell better, right? And they're more famous. because, And they make more money. Because they have these things to sell you to tell you something that you already have. You see what I'm saying? It's So don't go around just trying to hunt for every religious thing that you can i'm just saying be aware of this just know that it's there and they're good marketers so we need to be careful that we're not just buying into the next thing being sold because sometimes it's just outside mental revenue it's not spiritual it's just in your mind it's just in the sense realm not in the spirit realm okay so consistency is a key spiritual principle. So the fact that we can move in the spirit using this short method, we can be consistent with this. Okay? We can be consistent with this. James 1.22, but be doers of the word and not hearers, deceiving yourselves. It's the consistency and the diligence in praying like this. Taking, getting rid of all the distractions. How's that? 
by putting your whole heart and your whole mind, your whole strength on the Lord and just seeing yourself completely in him. Where, where, what else is there to get? He's there. He's right. He's right here. He's all like even around you and through you and in you. What is it that you need? Enjoying his presence. Getting over all these ideas. Well, what if God doesn't enjoy my presence? Well, do you think that he wouldn't enjoy your presence if he decided to make his house in your house? He made his home in your body? I mean, would you do that? Of course not. He absolutely enjoys with you. He enjoys you thinking about him. Because you know what? When you're thinking about him, did you know like, like when I'm thinking about Kim, she can tell. I can tell when she's thinking about me. We can, you can tell these things. You get, the, you get connected. You're connected. But the Lord knows too. I mean, if you know that you can do that with your wife or your husband, I mean, how much more the Lord? I mean, for goodness sake, you're like, I think about the Lord. It's like, he's thinking about me. I'm like, yes, we're there, man. We're already in it. We're having a good time. The Lord, listen, you're going to say, Jamin, this doesn't make any sense, but it does. If you think about it, it makes sense. The Lord wants you to have a lot of fun. He really does. He wants you to have a lot of fun. When you're not doing it, it's not fun. You're doing it wrong, you know? And sometimes we need to just get filled up with the Spirit. Sometimes we just need to get ourselves so completely lost in the Spirit, and then all of a sudden you're like, whoa, what just happened? Everything looks different now. Oh, that's great. Everything just looks different. Why is it different? Oh, because I've just been in the presence of God. How did you get there? I just sat down. <laughs> I just... <laughs> All right, that's good. Okay, so I just see, all right. Anyway, so this is what we're doing. It's good, all right? Just do it. Just spend time in the Lord's presence. Don't, um, everybody's different, you know. Everybody's different. Everybody's, you know, what the way that it happens with me isn't going to be the way it happens with you, the way it happens with this person. And just enjoy the Lord as you. Enjoy the Lord the way God made you. Let him take you from one realm of glory to the next realm of glory. Why? Because you're just taking your focus, you're putting on him, and man, you're just, whew, it's all he's all around. He's all around us. But you're just feeling that. I sure am feeling that. Would you like to feel it too? You should do it. You should see yourself in the Lord. You'd be like, boy, you're looking like you're nuts. I am. I'm nuts for the Lord. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> hey, if you... <laughs> I don't even know how to say it, but either way, I'm just going to love the Lord. You know, the scripture says that love the Lord with all your heart, mind and strength and love your neighbor as yourself. How do you love the Lord? Well, that's just one way you love the Lord is by realizing that he's in you. You're in him and just loving him, just talking about him, just seeing, you know, what are you putting your thought on? Ooh, that his presence is right here, right in you, all around you. All around the, everything. You're like, I need to bring it down. You don't need to bring anything down. Just jump in. Just jump in. All right? So let's, I'm already there, but let's just pray. So, I mean, I don't know how far I am, but we'll see. Father, thank you. Thank you for your presence. I pray for those that hear our message that they would just receive the word of God. And Father, I just thank you that as much religious stuff as we get, Lord, that the truth of, of what you've spoken to us through the word and by the spirit of truth would be revealed in hearts and minds, that we would leave behind the things of the earth, the things of, of the natural realm, of the, of the flesh, of the senses, and we would fully embrace, fully embrace you and our place in you that I am in him and he is in me, that the Lord is in his holy temple. Let all the earth be silent. Hallelujah. Praise you, Lord. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Amen. You can stop.